We welcome you to uh, Fivefold Voices today. I have a, a great lady that's uh, been a friend for, for many, many years. Uh, she's an author. She's a teacher. She's a speaker, a pastor's wife. Uh, what? A mother, a grandmother. I've seen the anointing on preachers and teachers and singers, that special unction of the Holy Ghost. But here we're seeing that the Word of God tells us that in the early church, everybody got it. Jesus, who probably, most likely, spoke Aramaic and Hebrew, but in this place he used a Greek word because it describes exactly what he wanted in his church. Welcome to Fivefold Voices. Our goal is to give you access to prominent people in the ministry. We're happy to present to you from Barberton, Ohio, Sister Nan Pamer. Sister mm -hmm. Pamer, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine, and I'm so happy to be with you, Brother Nathan. You've been a good friend to us, and I appreciate you very much, and I'm happy to, to be here today. Man, we're so glad you're here. So glad you're here. Now, uh, uh, of course, I've, I've known I've known about you, you know, basically all my life. But uh, did did you grow up in Pentecost? Or, you know, what, what's, yeah. your, what's your backstory there? I grew up in the uh, Little Rock, Arkansas area, <clears throat> and uh, my family. In fact, my grandparents uh, were won to the Lord by Brother Goss. He got off of a, wow. a train in Redfield, Arkansas, and preached mm -hmm. the gospel. And they received the Holy Ghost and then uh, moved to Little Rock. And uh, all of our family, you know, was centered there. So that's where I grew up and always knew the Lord. Wow. And, and how did you end up from Little Rock, Arkansas to Barberton, Ohio? Well, I met my husband at Bible school uh, in uh, St. Paul, Minnesota, the Apostolic Bible Institute. He graduated in 73. I graduated in 72. And then we got married in 73 and moved to Barberton. And the rest of history. You, you, you couldn't have found a closer Bible school than St. <laughs> Paul, Minnesota from Little Rock. I mean, you like, I'm getting out of here. I'm going. To... <laughs> I know. I mean, that was the coldest place on earth, I thought at the time. I really... I don't know. They they came and visited our camp meetings and I loved their annual. You know, it looked like such fun. And uh, I, another girl in the church had gone there okay. from the Little Rock Church. And um, so that that was just there was Texas and some others. But for some reason, I wanted to go to St. Paul. So I did. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, it's it's a match made in heaven because, man, you guys have. You, you, uh, how long have you been there in uh Barbara's 47 now. years, I believe. Wow. Yeah, yeah. What an incredible work. What yeah. an incredible church. I, I love Brother Pamer. I, I remember being there, uh, oh gosh, it's been several years ago that I was there. It was zero degrees. It was zero. <laughs> and, I, and I mean, there's snow on the ground and and uh, and we come out of the, we came out of the church one day and Brother Rod Pamer told me, he says, now brother, he said, it's going to warm up to 13. <laughs> I said, okay. He said, you'll be taking your coat off. I said, yeah, right. He says, no, trust me. 13 degrees, you'll be taking your coat off. Believe it or not, about one o'clock that afternoon, it got a, it went from zero to 13. And I honestly was taking my coat off. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's crazy. Fun. It's crazy. Wow. Well, well you have written, let, let, let me talk about your books first. You've written some phenomenal books. Uh, uh, you know, the, 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 I call it the Christmas story, but it was the uh, uh, swaddling cloth. Swaddling cloth, yeah, yeah. And then, and then the books for, for all the ladies. I have them listed here: uh, modesty, and uh, I live by His word. I will not bow. Man, these books are Sister Pamer. They're timeless, mm -hmm. and every every Christian young lady needs to read these books. It answers. They answer so many questions. Was, was that your point whenever you begin to write these books? I I, I want to let these people know why we do what we do and why we dress like we do. Was that your point in that? Or do you have well, a, have... I remember in that the time that I was writing, there was that great uh, philosophy, I guess you call it, that went through the, the apostolic movement and, and faith was all that was necessary. And I remember uh, being so consumed with the idea, yes, that's true. Uh, we are saved by grace and there is nothing that we can do to earn our salvation, but there is a need to react to that grace and, and that we should show forth works 
that we have been redeemed. I, I was just never uh, sold on the fact that you get saved and then do anything you want to. I just really believed that salvation should cause you to do better, to live better, to be a better person. And so that's kind of the uh, climate that I wrote those books in. And I just wanted to make a stand for the way I had been raised because it was a beautiful life and, and treasures were given to me and I wanted to defend them. Amen. So, so what do you tell uh, young ladies that, that come to you uh, and now, uh, you know, they're like, they're like, Sister Pamer, do, do we really have to dress? I mean, why do we dress like this? Why do we have to wear our hair a certain way? Why? I mean, you know, why, why do we have to do that? I know it's in the books, but, you know, but if you could, you know, if they, because you know they do, they come to you all the time. So what do you tell those young ladies whenever they come to you with, with those okay, types I think, of questions? I think probably one of the things that we've got to really be aware of is the pull of the world and that spirit of the world that is anti-Christ, that is anti-God. And I think anything that we can do to keep us uh, from being swept away into that is a blessing. And I've always seen the things that we obey in the Bible concerning our hair, the way we dress are, are ways that separate us from the world, that keep us from being uh, swept into all that sin. And so I, I just see them really as, as uh, barriers that protect us, a wall about us that right. keeps us from the world. Now, they are not worth a whole lot if there's not something inside of you. Amen. And I, I certainly call that, that every person must have a walk with God, must learn to love the Lord and stay in the word. I think if you're filled with with the messaging of the world all day long, whether it be media or social media or any of those things, if you're filled with the word, you really can't understand a separated life, a life of giving yourself to the kingdom of God. But if you stay in the word of God, um, you understand why things are necessary. Young ladies that are, Called, they're they're fe feeling called into ministry. Maybe not necessarily preaching, but maybe maybe it is preaching and speaking, and uh, and the Lord using them in in different ways. I think it's I, I just think it's exciting, you know. Now Me now too. you're you're from Little Rock. You're from Little Rock, Arkansas, and I'm from Louisiana originally. And so uh, you know, I mean, we I remember the time, you know, bless God. There's no women preachers. You know, you better you know you better be keep silent stuff. But uh, I, I like what Brother John Vasca said. He said, he said, man, loose those women and let them go in Jesus' name. Uh, yeah. So so what do you, you know, so some young lady comes to you and Sister Pamer, I feel like I, I, God's wanting to use me in, you know, and, and whenever we say ministry, that's such a broad brush, you know, but I mean, what do you tell those young ladies that whenever they say, I feel God wants to use me in some type of ministry? Well, I, I, always laugh when I see uh, these personality tests that they are giving people to find where you fit in the church and to get you into the best place that you're, you have giftings for because mm -hmm. my whole life was <laughs> wherever there was a need, that's what I had to feel. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm, I, I, there was brother Chad Erickson said this and I thought this was the most awesome quote. He says, the need is the call. Yeah. Wow. Amen. Yeah. So, and so. I lived, that is excellent. And that, that is what I lived wherever the kingdom of God, wherever the Barberton church needed someone to step in and do the work. That's what I was always willing to do. And uh, we were very much patriarchal type of church too, yeah. but in the kingdom of God, there is so much work to be done. And, uh, if, if you feel a calling, and I certainly felt this, to study the Bible, to, uh, to learn the Word of God, it will make room for itself. And Amen. there is always a need for someone to deliver the gospel to the lost. And whether that's home Bible studies or whether that's just a friend, you prepare yourself and study and doors will open. They just do. You can't stop uh someone who has a heart for God and a love for God and your room, your gifts do make room for themselves because when you're ready, the, the, the need will arise and you can step into it. I always am a little 
puzzled by people that whine about not having, uh, there's not an appreciation for their ministry and all that kind of stuff. They're being silly because there's so much work to do in the kingdom of God. And if you start sweeping up the church, it will open itself up. It, there, there will be opportunities come to you. So, you know, people just need to go to work and quit uh, worrying about how much, uh, you know, accolades they get. They just need to go to work. Amen. Yeah. Don't, don't tell me you want to work for God and you're not working right now. I mean, come that's, on. That's oh, true. my goodness. Hallelujah. And and we we have been involved. You and I have been involved uh, in uh, in the, uh, this great curriculum that you've written. And you've got a new one that's coming out. But uh, 10 Doctrines for Kids. Wow. One, let, let me give you a but before you tell, talk about that. Uh, we came to pastor. I think I was with you guys right before I right think after so. I came here yeah. yeah but before I moved to Joplin Missouri and uh I didn't man I I I fleeced God Lord let you know let my pastor and I wear the same color shirt if it's your will for us to go and lo and behold we both wore purple shirts that night you know and uh, yeah. uh Lord let 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 somebody say this to me and they would they would say it you know and uh and so finally, my wife was like, we've got to go to Joplin, Missouri, or God's going to send a big fish to swallow us up. <laughs> and so we, we moved we moved to Joplin, Missouri. We came here. We took over pastorate of the church where we are right now. And, uh, uh, I, you know, I, I just knew the people that were there. I didn't know what curriculums. I didn't know what they were teaching uh, as far as Sunday school at that time. And, uh, and, and you know, I, I just came in as pastor. And my first Sunday there... I'm walking through the children's Sunday school department and I walk in and the lady is hanging up uh, stuff, 10 doctrines for kids. Uh -huh. And I'm like, what, what, what is this? She said, oh, this is such a great program. She ha has the book. This is such a great program. Have you heard of this program? I said, uh, yeah, I, I think I've heard of that. <laughs> oh, that's great, Brother Nathan. And, uh, and I'm like, okay, that's just God confirming a little bit more that, that, uh, that I was supposed to be there. But, but wow, what a great curriculum. I mean, it's so, it's so, ti it's, it's timeless, as, as we said of other stuff as well. Thank you. It, uh, it started, I think, probably because that's about the time I started having grandchildren. <laughs> and I, uh, I, the, the you, need, the need. Yes. 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 And I, I felt such a, um, I don't know, a burden to make sure that they understood what we believed and I wanted it to be uh, fun. And I, my sister-in-law, Kathy Elkins, is the most fun person in the world. Oh, and, gosh. Um, and together we, we had just uh, the most delightful time working on that stuff. I would send her what the subject was and she would come up with these little singy kind of deals and the kids loved it. We just had more fun on those Wednesday nights. And um, as it went on, I, I could tell this was something important and good because the kids loved it. They couldn't wait to get to church on Wednesday night, bring their friends. So we, we knew we had stumbled onto something important. And you have a new one coming out. It kind of came out of a need to teach children. And well, and that was during that era where we began to reach out to the community children more. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to create a curriculum that would call them to make choices that took you higher. And we called it Reach High. Reach High, Reach High, come on everybody, Reach High. Don't pick up that little love stuff, Reach High, Reach High. But uh, it was so interesting when I came up with the concept of I wanted to teach children to strive for bigger and better things. Don't just settle for things. I got on my computer and looked up animals that reach high, I think was what the I put into the little uh, tag thing there. And up popped this animal called a Garanook from Africa. And they only eat from the buds of acacia trees and they always reach high. And you can see they look like a little deer and they reach up stand up straight and, and reach high. And then I knew that I had found the basis to uh, build on. So it, uh, it ended up being a wonderful curriculum. We've really enjoyed teaching it to our children, the community children. And so now we want to make it available to other people. We're trying to do it so that it's not a hard copy. You can just download it from the internet and, uh, and then it's available to you. And that's what we're working on right now. I, 
I really felt such a burden to teach the children. You've and you've got such a short uh, window to really train children to love God, to love the ways of God, the Word of God. And I will always be grateful to my dad for putting that love for his word in my heart. My dad loved the word of God and knew the value of it in giving you direction in life. And I think that is just so important that we get that out, that in our children early. Amen. And so I am a big advocate of pushing your children early. And I know they don't understand things when they're two years old, but I talk about it anyway. That's how they learn language. Is, right. is is the words you use when they're they're two years old? So why not use the language of the word word of God and pour that into them very early? Train them on that. Amen. And uh, I I'm a big advocate of starting early to teach them the ways of God. Yeah, if they could learn A B C D E. Uh, what, what's another one? My grandson is three years old and he's going around singing, uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, the, the 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 colors of the rainbow. Yeah. You know, at three years old, if they can learn that, I mean, they can learn the word of God. Uh, let's move into the uh, what I like to call the lightning round. And it's uh, it's loud and it's going to. So so if, so so put your seatbelt on okay. and, and hold on. OK, because uh, we're just to go into the lightning round with the one and only Sister Nan Pamer. It's the lightning wow. round. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> it's the lightning round with Sister Nan Pamer uh, from Barberton, Ohio. Praise God. Here we go. Are you ready? Sister ready. Pamer, uh, uh, do you prefer hamburger or pizza? Pizza. Pizza. All right. Talking or texting? Texting. Wow. Hey, I, I will say this about your texting. You. I don't know what phone you're using now. But you had, uh, I can't remember what phone, but your thumbs are just like, like, I mean, you you text as fast as you talk. You're amazing at it. He's good. I love it. Uh, Here we go. Uh, Cake or pie? Pie. Pie. Oh, do you have a favorite kind of pie? No, no. No. (laughs) I just make pies. That's Southern, I guess. Pecan. I make a lot of pecan pies. I, I, I've never had a I've never had a Nan Pamer pecan pie. I mean, come on, where, where have I missed this at? You come know? back to Barberton. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Starbucks or Dunkin' Donuts? I guess Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Really? Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't That's I don't amazing. put stuff in my coffee, so you know Starbucks. Theirs is so strong when you don't have a bunch of junk in it that I I can't drink it. <laughs> You are the first person that has chosen Dunkin' Donuts. So, right. I mean, just, wow. Just be, I just would rather have a plain cup of coffee. Uh, in the Bible, other than Jesus, other than Jesus, who would be your favorite person in the Bible? That would always be at what period of time I was in. I loved Ezra and Nehemiah. I don't know something about those men and what they did. I, I, I would say that. The Apostle Paul. Oh my goodness! There's. It would be too hard for me to make a decision like that. But I, I, I just the characters of the Bible have been so life giving to me through the years, different periods of my life. I like it. I like it. Uh, so, uh, do you do you prefer to ask permission or beg forgiveness? Ask permission. Okay. My son begs for get for, for <laughs> but I ask permission. That's fine. <laughs> no, not 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 brother, not brother Paul Pamer. He yeah. doesn't do that. Yeah. Yes, that's him. And last question, Sister Pamer. Here we go. If you could go back to your teenage self, if you could go back to the teenage Sister Nan Pamer and give her any advice or tell her to do something totally different, what would it be? I think. I would, I think I would draw my circle in a little tighter. I feel like in um, many of the years that I was actively in ministry, I, I my circle was way too broad. I, I just always thought in such big, you know, reaching out to more and more people. And I, I kind of wish I would have just drawn in and 
taken care more of the people that were assigned to me in this church. And I do that now and I find such fulfillment in it. But at the same time, that didn't seem to be the plan of God for me. So uh, I'm not sure that I, I want to change it, but I, I just love the idea of ministering to fewer people in a deeper way than I once did. Like uh, more discipleship stuff. Yeah, yeah. And and even with older people, which is the category of people I'm in now, older people just, you know, being there for them and um, sharing life in a deeper way with them. I, I'm really enjoying that, that part of, of ministry now. And, uh, I had a scripture. I'll leave a scripture with you, Brother Nathan, just to, to because I've been studying this for and reading it over and over for the last few days. It's from 2 Peter 2 and 1. And it says something that really, I don't know, it's just gotten into my bones. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. So grace and peace are two things that we really have got to have. We've always got to have grace because we're human and we need peace to get through the, the uh, I don't know, the hecticness of life the the traumas of life so grace and peace be multiplied in, unto you through the knowledge of god in jesus christ so wow when you think that there every time i study the word every time i get into the bible every time i study jesus's teaching there is promised me peace and and grace and those are the two things that you have to have to get through this life and it comes from a knowledge of god so Keep on studying, Brother Nathan. Study that word, and grace and peace will come to you, your family, and your church. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I don't know. It's really gotten a hold of me. There's a reason we read our Bibles and study our Bibles, because grace becomes, uh, somehow God imparts that to us when we're studying His Word. And we all need grace and we all need peace in these very, very troublesome times. Do you find in reading your Bible that even though you've read it you know, hundreds of times, thousands of times, like that grace and peace there, how many times have you read that then all of a sudden it just jumps out at you? Well, you know, the in church history, there's um, references to the illumination of the Bible. And uh, even th there were Bibles written where they would put all this illumination stuff, this gold and things, and those Bibles are priceless today. But I, as I've gone through life, the Bible does illuminate. All of a sudden, a scripture will absolutely, a light bulb comes on underneath that, and it speaks volumes to you. And it you keep going back to it, and you keep studying it, and then it begins to yield its treasures. And you are a changed person by one little verse in the Bible. And that process has been at work in my life, my whole life. There, there has been times, and I, I've been doing a Bible study with a brand new lady that doesn't know anything. And I told her, I said, you know, uh, someone that doesn't come to the Bible with faith, they'll open the Bible, they won't get a thing out of it, they'll mock it. Uh, that John Piper's son, I don't know if you've heard TikTok, he has said some of the most vile, wicked, uh, cursing the Bible kinds of things. I've only watched one and that was enough. Wow. That kind of person that, that comes to the word with no faith, they they won't get a thing out of it. It's just a waste of time. And that's what he does. He makes fun of the Bible. But if a person comes with faith and hunger, that thing will give you treasures that you can't even, I mean, it will, it, it changes your life. It, it, it makes you a new creature every time that you read it. And so uh, I, I admonished her, you have got to come to the word with faith. Otherwise, it's a blank book for you. But if you come with faith, it will yield things that will be treasures till the day you die. You will be, you will be speaking the word of God when you leave this word, if you train yourself to come to it with faith. Wow, so, praise God. So, so you're telling me that as the bishop's wife, you're still teaching Bible studies? Oh, yes, I uh, I still, and that's what I was referring to earlier, people that are looking for a ministry. If you prepare yourself, doors will open. This is one of the community kids' moms that, uh, that we've worked with for years. And then all of a sudden, God puts it in her heart. She wants to start coming to church and wants to understand Christianity. And she's, I'm sure, probably in her 30s but we've made a connection. So I'm teaching her the Bible on Wednesday mornings. 
Praise so. God. Yeah. The, the need is there. You just got to step yes. to the door. Yes. And keep, don't give up. Don't give up because God will open doors for you. Sister Pamer, thank you so very much for being with us. Is, is there is, is there anything else, any last advice? I, I know I said I wasn't going to ask this, but I mean, you're, I, I, I'll never get this chance again in, in another, you know, 50, 30 years or so. <laughs> well, if, it, if, if indeed this is going to younger people that are thinking about things in the ministry, this is what I would say. And I guess really this is the younger self uh, question that you were asking. I, I think it is primary that you have devotional time and prayer time. No matter how busy you are, no matter what, you have to keep that uh, connection to the Word of God and to the Spirit of God through prayer. Those two things just keep you balanced and anchored and don't ever let anything interfere with those. They just keep you on the right track. And, uh, and so I just really, really say do that. And I did most of my life do that, but but there were times that were so busy that it seemed like it was uh, way too fast. But but that's what I would, would leave. That's what I would want to leave. Your devotion to time is imperative. Amen. Amen. And read those Nan Pamer books, every <laughs> single one of them. Even the, even the Christmas story one. Come well, on. Thank you, Brother Nathan. I appreciate your friendship. God bless you and your family and your church there in Joppa. Well, he has, just because we know the just because we know the Pamers is a, is a blessing. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Amen. Sister Pamer, would you do us a favor? Would, would Could you pray us out here today? Would you do that, please? Yeah, I would be honored to. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the wonderful gifts that you've given us. You have been so good to give us such exciting lives and lives full of helping others. And we are so appreciative of that. And I pray right now that the words that have been spoken today will bless someone, that you will speak to their hearts through the word. We love you, Lord, and we're thankful to be part of your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen.